any major changes uh, apart from it being the PF budget with just a few or minor changes. Well, I hope you feel ashamed now that the budget really, you know, sounds to be very different, uh, exciting a lot of Zambians out there. 173 billion kwacha coming from uh, the 1.6 billion kwacha of uh, the last year of the current budget in short that we have. Uh, Are you able to apologize, first of all? Innocent. To be unschooled, mm. this is a very good budget. Come again. To those who lack understanding, this is a very, very good budget. Mm. But you see, a budget is a plan. All right. Okay? Mm. It's a plan. All right. And it, it, it must clearly indicate what you intend to achieve. Okay? Mm intended outcomes. Now, when you look at um, <coughs> uh, the budget as it was presented yesterday, first and foremost, let's look at uh, the minister says he intends to grow the economy by 5.9%. Mm. If last year's budget was uh, 160 billion, uh, let's round uh, the, the 5.9 to 6%. Will it give us uh, uh, 13, 13 billion? <coughs> no. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> first and foremost, the figures are not adding. Right. So, uh, 6% of 160 billion will be around uh, 8, 8 billion. So, where is this excess five billion coming from? The numbers are not adding. Mm. Okay? Right. First and foremost. Secondly, this budget is not speaking to the population of Zambia, to the citizen of Zambia. Right. Mm. You see, it's, you, it's, it's, it's the population activity, population activity that determines production. Right. Now, in this budget, it is not clearly aligning itself you know, to, to the citizens. It's, it's outside hmm. you know, you know, population activity. So, it is not answering. Hmm. This budget is not answering <coughs> to our developmental needs. Okay. Government business is serious business, innocent. <laughs> government business is serious business. And any serious government <laughs> will make a profit. It's no business. Government must make a profit. But when I look at this budget, there's no way a government is going to make a profit. Let me give you an example. <laughs> what I'm saying that it is not speaking to the population right and also it cannot make a profit right okay mm. now let's let's look at the population itself okay first and foremost the minister does not allude to population management what is the population of Zambia mm. two three years ago you were saying 18 million sure population. what is the rate of population growth in, in Zambia is it 3.2 has it been factored in in this budget? Because we are still saying 18 million three years down the line. Then we are lying. The population is above 20 million. So, has this budget taken into account the population and the population activity? No. Let me give you one good example of a population activity. Yeah. The future of this nation. The babies, the babies who are being born today, okay? We know others are on the garbage heap. Yeah. This budget does not address how it is going to move those street kids and those who are picking from garbage heap. Mind you, those are saying they're not insane children who are picking from the garbage heap. Mm. 
this budget does not address how they're going to pick those children from the garbage heaps, from the streets, and rehabilitate them into responsible citizens. <coughs> It does not talk about foster homes, <coughs> but it talks about sending 26, is it 25.7 million kwasha mm. to a constituency, a CDF, Corruption Development Fund. The minister has decided to enhance corruption at constituency level. Mm. Because other than saying, you know, sending that money, there are no projects there. That after the money arrives, that is the time they must form a committee and start thinking of what they, they must do. Hmm. That is not how you do things. Now, that CDF, under what category of the relationship between central government and local government does it form? Is it a recurrent grant? Is it a capital grant? Or equalization grant? It is not classified. And worse still, he adds more confusion by saying now bursaries will be in the 25.7 million kwacha. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take that money and take it to invest of Zambia or Copper Belt University so that those who are deserving, they find it other university. It is as simple as that instead of going to create confusion. Mm -hmm. Because there there will be corruption now of who must be on the list. You know how these things happen. You create more confusion hmm. in the education sector. It means that you don't have a plan. Uh, uh, President Swale, let me just uh, chip in a few questions here. In your preamble, you did mention that, um, or you are arguing that uh, this budget is not in tandem uh, to the people with the people of Zambia, the general populace. All right. I'm not sure what you mean exactly, uh, because uh, already in this budget we've been told that uh, as one of uh, the, 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 the achievements is to abolish the payment of school fees among the learners. All right. And you are aware as a parent, you are, you are aware as a leader that we've had children or we have children that are failing to pay school fees as we speak right now. Again, there is an abolishment of uh, tuition fees, among others, exa ex examination fees, among others, PTA, all those you know, uh, money that uh, parents were, were struggling to, to, to find. Government has taken over all those things. Don't you think that this is a budget which is responding or which responds to the needs of a poor you know, child out there watching this program? Come next year. There will be no need for someone to go and look for money no, to pay no, school fees. No. What when kind you, of response are we talking about? When you find maize in, you know, in, 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 in a field, mm. it has already tussled. Do you fertilize it or do you continue watering it? Mm. Because if you fertilize, you are wasting resources. Okay? Continue watering it. Whatever you harvest, you mm. harvest. Now reserve that fertilizer for your next, next planting, uh, planting season so that you can manage the crop. Now you must have a plan. Here you declare a loss. Okay? You declare a loss and have a plan for your next harvest. How are you going to harvest? Have, have, have a bump harvest. Yeah. Now in this case, you are saying you abolish your school fees, your tuition, tuition fees. fees. Tuition fees where? At the university. Mm. Because you are talking about, do you have tuition fees in primary schools? Do you have tuition fees in secondary school? You don't have. So the tuition is at university. Level. So they abolish tuition fees at the university. So how will they compensate for the loss of revenue in these universities. You see, let us be honest when we are presenting some of these things. Mm. And school fees? School fees, let me tell you, in 1964, mm. when we inherited 
you know, the, the education system from the British. Yeah. It was based on the welfare system. That is why you hear that there was free education. No, there was no free education. It was a welfare system. The government, huh? the government took responsibility mm. for your welfare, you know, for the human capital development. Because you're talking about human capital development mm. here. <laughs> Government's role in developing human capital. Mind you, there are only two resources a nation has. It's a citizen and the land. And the role of government, <coughs> the role of government, is to invest in citizens <coughs> to acquire knowledge and skill to work the land. It's as simple as that. Now, in, vast, in that investment program, <coughs> there must be a national nutritional standard. Citizens must be well fed. Now, when citizens are well fed, they will have a higher standard of health. This higher standard of health will lead to life, a long life expectancy. Are you with me? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm getting so it. that there is no turnover in the in the population. Mm. You know that the country begins to lose. You know this the knowledge and skill. When people are dying unnecessarily, out of hunger-related diseases. Hmm. If you go to hospitals today, you'll find 90% of the diseases at hospitals yeah. are hunger-related. Now, does this budget respond to resolving the hunger-related diseases at all? Hmm. You know, in the population? No. Life expectancy? No. Is this budget... Is this budget moving the health system from a disease burden mm. to preventive health. No. So there's no plan mm. based on, on, on the citizen. It's the quality of life of a citizen that it must first address mm. before anything else. How do you want uh, this budget really to respond to uh, those questions that you have, you know, in terms of addressing the uh, matters relating to diseases and the likes, you know, because those things have been taken care of under the Minister of uh, uh, Health, you know. Going to buy drugs, let me tell you what. Yeah. Building big hospitals mm. is no solution because it's a government that is first breeding. Mm. Government is breeding diseases. In the environment, mm. you know that we have called it dysentery. Zambia mm. is listed by the United Nations, the UN, as a country yeah. inf infected <coughs> and affected by cholera and dysentery. Mm. So if you want to promote tourism, it will not happen. One. Cholera and dysentery is feared in the Western world. Okay? Right. So when you look at this budget, has it addressed the issue of cholera and dysentery? Mm. No. Second, has it addressed the the issue of hunger, the, you know, as it addressed the national nutritional standard, that we begin to say, because first and foremost, just government pronouncing a national nutritional standard mm. will spur agricultural production. Right. If, if say, it is, it is government's intention that every citizen must have two eggs in a day, Mm. With a population of 20 million, you require to produce 40 million mm. eggs in a day. You, 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 you get what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Okay? Mm. So, because there's a ready market for these eggs, people will, go, will be motivated to get into production of, of, of eggs. All right. What? Family. Beef. Mm. You know, you know. Uh, ranching cattle for beef, you see, it vegetable growing. Mm. Are, are you with me? Yeah. Now, this budget must address those issues so that the market gets organized first and people now respond to generated demand. Mm. Are you with me? It's the people activity that the budget must fund in order to generate demand.
in order to get sectors moving. Mm. That is not addressed in that budget. All right. That budget is a sixes and sevens. <laughs> I want you to simplify um, for the sake of a viewer or a young girl um, or a young boy out there who is asking or wondering why you are, you are not happy with this budget. Like I did um, explain, it takes away the burden of paying school fees, for example. Are you happy with that or are you not now happy with that? Now, what is the quality? Mm. What is the expected outcome? Mm. What is the quality of the product mm. of that? Before we get to the quality or quantity, let us talk about the action that has been taken by government. Yeah, but to it, take it, it, over the see, burden of paying school fees uh, for abolishing uh, school fees in, 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 in secondary schools. Listen Are you happy with it or not? Listen to this. All right. If you, are, if you want to arrive at a position, mm. you first take a general overview. Yeah. <clears throat> okay? Mm generalization and that is what this budget is doing mm. now let us now approach it from a deductive point of view yeah. so that we we segment and begin to understand mm. okay what is the quality of that child yeah. even if you remove that child is hungry you, 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 listen, listen to this listen to this <laughs> that child is hungry you, you, go to school hungry mm. Where is the concentration? How? You, you are losing me now. Uh, listen, listen to me. Yeah. The hunger situation. You are looking at the prawns. You know, there's a... The, 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 let's the look hunger at... situation in this country yeah. needs government intervention. Mm. That's why I'm talking about the national nutritional standard. Look, what government must first protect... Mm. Can we look at, before you proceed, uh, President no, no. Suwale? It's the brain development. Look. Right. Strength, I, I get you. Strength, I get you. Me, the strength of any nation is not big bodies. <laughs> it's the brain power. <laughs> the Chinese are small people. Mm. But it's the brain power. The intelligence. They are healthy. Yes. The Japanese are small people. But it's the brain power mm. that makes them to do the things that it do. Do you know where I want to, no, uh, no, listen, where, where I want to subject now, you to? If government cannot prepare these children. Yeah. Okay? So those are the disadvantages of this action that government has taken. So I want us to be very much, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, categorical yeah, yeah. here in the way we're going to analyze this uh, 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 budget. Okay? Uh, Let's look at the advantages. One of the advantages that government has taken over the burden of uh, parents or guardians of paying school fees, looking for money to pay school fees for their children. Now, That's the advantage. Let's, now you have quickly jumped in, talking about the disadvantages. Are you happy that pupils at secondary school level, let, let, they will no longer be paying school fees? Listen to this. Right. How did we get to this situation? Are hmm. you with me? Mm. We must address first how did we get to this situation so that the child mm. that you want the school fees removed is busy on the garbage heap collecting a plastic <laughs> bottle to go and buy a band to eat. Okay? Mm. Now let us first remove that child from there, yeah. from the garbage heap, rehabilitate that child. Mm. Then take him to that school where you remove fees. Mm. We are procuring a roof without first laying a foundation and building a structure on which the roof can sit. Right. That is not the way you do things. The government must address the population activity. Let me mm. give you a, a, another example. Sure. Go ahead. Taxation in the mining sector. Mm -hmm. In that budget, taxation yeah. in the mining sector. Yeah. What, <coughs> what did the minister say? about taxation and mining. Mm. Is there anything that is tangible in that budget about taxing mm. the mining sector? What I expected from the minister mm. was first to read the, the law, mm. the, 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 the Mines and Minerals Act, which is very, very clear. Okay? In the Mines and Minerals Act, as it is today, mm. It has a provision 
It has a provision to invoke the principle of discounting for future generations. Mm -hmm. That when these mining investors come in, they are granted land where they're going to mine. At the end of mining, <coughs> they're supposed to decommission those activities. It's the principle of discounting for future generations, which is there. Now, the investors come with money and technology, two things. They find us with land and technology. Why do we fail to have our land compensated, our mineral being compensated? But their money and technology is compensated as profit. Why don't we invoke the principle of discounting for future generations? If they mine two tons of copper, one ton is theirs to write their books of accounts, to pay the workers. <coughs> the other ton is for them born child. Are you with me? Yeah, sure. That is the taxation that we can say would develop Zambia. One. Two. And I'm glad that you, sh you seem to be sharing the same concern or similar concern with uh, 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 President Sean Tembo, again, who is also lamenting that uh, in this budget really is not addressing the, uh, or it's not really putting Zambia on the benefit side from the mining sector. Yeah. You know, and I, I wanted to find out in terms of uh, how best can we begin to uh, get the dividends as a country from the mining sector. Because remember, it's, it's, it's a controversial uh, sector. No, it's not controversial. You know, it's it is. I mean, we have some of the mines, no, no. Uh, you know, that are in courts no, as we speak right now. It's, it's, and we don't even know whether the, 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 the Danta issue and Zambia, uh, how is that issue has been settled or when it's going to be settled. You know, all those things. Let me tell you one thing. You know, as for the that's where the controversy issue, starts. The Lungu administration, the yeah. corrupt Lungu administration, mm. the thieving Lungu administration mm. messed up. Okay? The new donor administration, the best the new donor administration can do mm. is hand over that mine to Pentante. Right. Negotiate, hand it over. <coughs> and the next thing, they must sell the shareholding in that mine, mm. either to Pentante or any other investor, so that government steers clear from mining activities. Right. Then invoke the principle of discounting for future generations. Uh, we should not be emotional about it. And we capable as a country to begin to manage, you know, our own no, no. Uh, companies, such as no, the mines. No, no. We're not saying we grab the mine. We're saying sell the, you see, the 20% golden share that you have in the mines. Sell it to them. But you just said that uh, the, the best thing the UPND government can do is to hand over back the mine to Vedanta. Vedanta, yes. You know, so the question is, and we capable as a country no, to begin no. to run these mines. Let's listen to Remember that. Let us not be emotional. The KCM. No. Let me just finish my question. The KCM story or mine, in the last I don't know if it's six, six seven years, it has been run by the locals. Why yeah. can't we proceed okay, from where, that where trajectory? The, where, where is the profit? Have you seen the profit from the mines? Mm. Have you been transparent? That's why, you, you, see, that's why the UPND is here to, 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 to correct the mess. No, no. Yes. Now, in correcting that mess, mm. that's why we, we are saying, we have celebrated yeah. okay, the removal of colonialism. Right. Now we are a sovereign nation. Mm. We are not. No, listen, 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 listen. We are not. If no, you are listen, going to advocate listen, for listen, the Danta, who is, listen, who is listen, a foreign listen, you know, this, individual or investor to continue running these mines, then we are not independent. What, what, what it means is that right. <clears throat> those investors, they come here. What are they looking for? Mm. Profit. Yeah. <clears throat> what is our gain? I, I will think. Sure. Because tax, as you put it, tax is a service. Like you're, you know, you, 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 you give a car to, to your friend, mm -hmm. use it for your businesses. He puts in fuel, 
Huh? Yeah. Uh, he takes it for repair. You are happy with it. Now, what's your return on the car? Mm. That is what must concern us now. Okay? Right. What is the return on that car? That is what must concern us now. Right. Okay? For the past 56 years, we've never had a return on the mining sector. And the only way we're going to have a return on the mining sector is when we invoke the principle of discounting for future generations. Own the mine 100%. You mine two tons. One is yours. One is for the unborn Zambian child. So, we share production. 50-50. That is the only way we're going to... Because at the end of the day, look at Mopani. Grenko just walked out. Yeah. Grenko walked out. You know why? Mm. And because the corrupt Lungu government was in a hurry to make money deals and things like that, they even left you with a bill of 1.5 billion mm. billion dollars. When the government, what the government should have done at that time was simply to say, okay, you want to pull out, we have no problem. Mm. Now, <clears throat> the commission, give us a decommissioning plan. Commission the mine. Hmm. Cost it and the pairs. Then you go. Hmm. It's as simple as that. Okay, can the UPND... can you restore? Can you restore the land yeah. that you damaged? Can you restore it? And the reason why we must be getting that one turn out of the two turns is because when they leave, we must restore. It's the unborn child who is coming to restore that land to decommission those mines. And that message is going to to the UPND government. They must be able to do I that. want to believe so. Yes. Because if you talk about the PF, I mean, for how long are people going to stand on the pulpit and begin to r lament always about what President Galungu did, what the yeah, PF did? Now, if we're going to repeat, to, listen to, listen to, yeah. if we're going so, to repeat, in this budget we've repeated the, yes. same, the same mistakes of Lungu. Now, for the past 57 years, mm -hmm. we've repeated the same mistakes all over and over. And expecting a different outcome. Let us begin to think, you know, smartly. Where, where is the problem here, President Suarez? Because it's you great. know, when these investors, you know, mining investors, comes in our country, really, we, we see you know, some ignorance. kind of uh, you know relief on their side when it comes to paying taxes. You know, uh, okay, let you me find that an investor will come in the country, give an example. be given a tax That's holiday for about maybe three, four years. It's, it's Some of them, after that, that, you know, that duration, is, it comes to an end. They pack their bags and that go. That is corruption. You know, because you see, these things are not done transparently. Mm. Okay, that's corruption. That you know, we exchange money and you say, "Give me these incentives." Right. And we are tired. Let's have, let's have a change. Mm. Okay. Give them the mines. Give them the mines, hundred percent. Let us share. And we just invoke the principle of discounting mm. for few generations. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Okay? You get one ton, I also get one ton. The cost of mining is yours. The cost of <coughs> decommissioning the mine is mine. Let us share the burden. Mm. Now, Mopani, there, yeah, the land is destroyed. They've walked out and they've left us, left us with $1.5 billion. Mm. And we, sure. the selling mm. of, the, uh, of the copper will be done by the same criminals. The same criminals who destroyed the land there. Do we still have those criminals even now in the new Don administration that you are, uh, if you are going to present reporting a, to? If you are going to present a budget like, a, like that and you call it a budget, then there's something wrong. Yeah, you, then you are part of the same criminals. What kind of a budget were you looking for, President Suwale? Because I can uh, maybe highlight to you some of the uh, achievements here that have been scored so far in this budget that you are um, undermining, for lack of better words. Already, this budget is actually telling the people of Zambia or the unemployed teachers out there that come next year, uh, 30,000 teachers or unemployed teachers will have to find a job in government. All right? That's, Which that's, is a significant change or that, achievement. Let me just finish my question, first of all. Okay, which is a significant, a significant achievement so far. Again, besides, by the way, we've got uh, about over 50,000 unemployed, a backlog of unemployed teachers in this country, as we speak right now. 
of course more are still coming so and if it's over 100,000 you know and it's if over 100,000 teachers and if government would tell you that we are going to get about 30,000 i mean uh, how much how many are we going to remain with okay Listen, can you appreciate that uh, health workers as well 11,000 to be employed when, when, when you do things, you can't appreciate that if you do things in a mediocre way you even ask people to praise you. I will. <laughs> That's why I have called for budget reform. Mm. Now that budget reform entails that mm. no one will sit in Lusaka and employ teachers. No one will sit in Lusaka and employ health personnel. It's the needs of those areas that we employ. Because you can't say there is need for 200,000 teachers. Mm. And we've trained 100,000. <clears throat> and we can't employ the 170. We employ 30,000. Mm. And you're proud of that. Let us embark on the budget reform. It's a change, huh? No. You, you need to be aware. Now, what is, Just recently what, what, what is the quality of that employment itself? Let me, listen, listen, you hear this? Yeah. Just we, recently, look, the last employing, employing, of employing was people. about 1,200 uh, and should be zero six somewhere there. It's still mediocre. It's still in and the same. And then has brought is it's the same intended mediocre to employ 30,000. No, let me tell you. Yeah. It's the same mediocre standard, okay, of employment. And that employment that you're talking about is still under employment. We are not employed according to the standard. What, what is the standard here? Are you Listen looking for? If you are going to say, uh, let, let's look at the average uh, salaries for teachers in the sub-region. Let's look at South Africa, for example. Mm -hmm. How much is a teacher getting? Because a domestic worker, mm -hmm. minimum wage for a domestic worker in South Africa is 3,500 mm -hmm. rands which is about 4,000 kwacha. Yeah. And that's what you're giving a Zambian teacher. That is underemployment. Are, are you with me? Mm. A teacher in, in Zambia is qualified to be a domestic worker in South Africa. And you're proud that you've employed 30,000. Mm. Let us go back to the basics. What we're calling for is let's, let's go back to the basics. Because... Why are you so quick, Mr. Uh, President Suwale, to only talk about the disadvantages? First of all, like I told you, what if is the I were you, for what example... What is the advantage which is there? Exactly. Show me if, the advantage. If I were you, Look, I was I going am to closer. say... Look, listen to me. Yeah. I am closer hmm. to the powers that be. Exactly. I'm, I'm aware. No, listen to me. Yeah. Now, I... Look, I want things done correctly in this country. Exactly. Now, listen to me. I'm going no I'm not going to shy away. Mm. I'm not going to shy away from criticizing the wrongs. Mm -hmm. Because where I'm coming from is very far. Mm. Where I'm going is very near. What I know, what I know. Mm -hmm. I must share it with my friends. Yeah. But if they don't want to listen, I'll share with it in public because look i have nothing to hide mm. let us go back to the basics let's go back to the drawing boards as so a member we... of the upnd alliance all right and if i was in your shoes right now i would have said i think it's a very good uh, you know move that we have taken as upnd alliance government or the, it's a good move that bali has taken by announcing or proposing to employ 30,000 teachers. Not mediocre. Now, listen, listen, what we should do here... Mediocrity. Let no, me, no. I would, uh, listen no, no. to me. He, what I would have said innocent. if I were you. Innocent. What we can do now is to ensure that we improve the conditions of service for these teachers. What we, they how, should are you, have. how are you going to improve the conditions of service when you are saying you are going to rely on 1.3 billion grant from IMF? So why IMF give us another 1.3 billion dollars next year? Let us be honest. Hmm. Let us go back to the drawing boards. Let us address, address the basics, the foundation of this nation. The foundation is not there. Hmm. Okay? For example, let me give you an example. Yeah. The minister says he's hoping that foreign investors will come to Zambia. 
I don't know if he, it's, na it's naivety. Mm. Because we've wasted 30 years, 30 years, talking about the foreign investor coming to Zambia. But one thing you must... Do we need them? We I do need them, right? We, we do need foreign investment. Yeah. Okay? Mm. But have we done enough? For example, you have an investment pledge of $10 billion. Mm. You think that $10 billion will come to your economy? If you're naive, you, you think mm. that $10 billion will come to your economy. Mm. But what will happen is that the investor will leave that money in his bank account abroad. Because money has no legs. One. Money doesn't move. Mm. They will leave the money in the bank abroad. Come to Zambia. First government for the necessary licenses. Mm. Once they are done, they will open local bank accounts. Then they will mirror that money. We have $10 billion in our bank account. You can confirm with our, our bankers. Mm. Now give us the local money here. We start these projects. If in the economy there's, there isn't the equivalent of $10 billion in Kwacha, they'll go away because there's no economy. Mm. Let us not continue on the path of naivety. What we must address are the underlying problems in the financial sector. Mm. Okay? Yeah. For example, <coughs> the mortgage crisis of 1972. Right. It has never been resolved. The only attempt was 1975, 74, 75, mm. when the World Bank gave us a grant under the law known as Statutory and Improvement Areas Act, where all these shanty compounds you call site and service came from. Okay. okay. Now, that was a grant. The solution then, under the World Bank grant, was rentals to councils, mm -hmm. where they built a structure, a slab, and a toilet on it. Then, they give you innocent, mm -hmm. that this is a loan now, and you continue paying to the council rent. And in the meantime, you must complete the structure, building the structure. Okay. Now, the solution was at variance with the problem. Because the problem was the collapse of the mechanism to continuously recapitalize the economy. Okay? The next attempt was 2004, under Leif Mwanawasa. They came up with a document known as Financial Sector Development Plan 2004 2009. Mm. Okay? Yeah. But when you go to the chapter called Mortgages, mm. it opens with a bold statement the mortgage sector in Zambia is dead. You are simply saying the physical economy of Zambia is dead. Then go to the last page Intervention Measures, N O N E, none. Mm. And you call it a plan. You don't have a solution. You know, to a dead economy. Mm. And you call it a plan, financial sector development plan 2004 2009. Are with me? Sure. Now, this budget has not addressed that problem. How are they going to resolve the mortgage crisis of 1970? Because it has wiped out the entire capital base of the Zambian economy. That's why when you see oh, the consortium of local banks mm. cannot fund a cheap stadium like National Heroes Stadium. $90 million. They can't put $90 million. They can't fund any turnkey project. Because they make the, the, the capital base has been wiped out. The aviation industry cannot take off. Can we, can we say it's a good start it's not a in good the right start. direction? No. Because remember that the European did that, so now they are you no. know, forming government. No. That's the reason why yeah. they should have asked. Asking if, who? Listen to this. They should have requested hmm. for the moving of the budget cycle in order to make surgery of that PF budget. Mm. Okay? Instead of rushing to present... What kind of surgeries were you expecting, President Suwale? Uh, reason being that uh, I, I think even last time when you came, you talked about uh, uh, collecting data. You know, you, 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 you expressed concern that uh, it would be difficult or it was going to be difficult for the UPND to present the national budget because they did not have enough time to collect data. No, All right? That was yeah. your, your, yeah. your justification. Yes. Now, 
Now, the issue of data can only be collected by now, the data, sitting what's government. The quality, what's the quality? Listen to me. You've just talked about... That is, allow that's... me just to finish my question so that we don't uh, interrupt each other. All right? And uh, you, here you've come in, you are saying, we, what's the population of this country? Okay, we are... Estimating that we could be about 18 million uh, people no, or may, more, more than no, that. Three years ago, you, know? you were 18. So now, the issue of the population. Why do, you intend, why do you always want to estimate? Why can't you have the exact number of people? So you what cannot you? expect the UPND administration to form government today in the last two months and give you the national budget, uh, or before giving you the national budget, uh, conduct maybe census, which was supposed to be done by the previous administration. I think we need to be a little bit listen, fair here. Listen, listen, you know, so if the PF failed to conduct a national census, then we, I think it would be naive for you and the people of Zambia that are maybe on your side to put the burden on the UPND now on the, with regards to the population of this country. When you enter the forest, hmm. huh? you hmm. must be ready. The first thing that you must first understand mm -hmm. is that the 1964 budget, yeah. which was delivered mm -hmm. in the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia mm -hmm. on midnight, 23rd October 1964, the statistics for arriving at formulating that budget mm -hmm. was based on the settler community. Right. Okay? No single Zambian was accounted for in that budget. Right. 57 years down the line, you and I are not accounted for in Sokotwane's budget. Hmm. We're not accounted for. That's why in there, <coughs> there are emoluments for politicians. Why can't they say they will not pay politicians? Why? Why can't all of them say, we love this country so much hmm. that we're going to volunteer? But they're in there you hear the debate on allocation of those mm. you know, resources that they were portioned for themselves. The president's salary, the minister's salary, the member of parliament. Okay? Mm. Then, when you talk of hospital, donors, schools, donors, even they say they removed fees, mm. they will still go to donors. Why can't we arrive at our own budget? We must be able to be able to cost our our development agenda, segment it, short term, mid term, and long term. Short term in government is five years. Mid term is a generation twenty five years. Long term is ten generations, hmm. two hundred and fifty years. Then we do the planning linkages. With that, it is going to. With that, just that it will activate two instruments. Two instruments which every government, every same government on earth must right. use in the development agenda. I want you to spend time a little bit and uh, talk about uh, the CDF, of course, an increment in the uh, CDF so far by the UPND administration. I bring this uh, component very cardinal reason being that in the, main, uh, in the last many years, I think, we've had a lot of complaints coming from uh, various constituencies. You know, we find that uh, people begin to accuse their members of parliament. We can't see our, our, our MP, you know, is an absentee lawmaker. There's no development here in our constituents in the last five years. And if you went to ask a member of parliament to tell you, that is because of, uh, it's not my job, it's the job of the central government. And besides that, the money which is being allocated to these constituencies across the country is too little, 1.6 you know, million kwacha, what can I do with it? So members of parliament have been advocating for an increase to the CDF. And the body comes in, uh, gives them about 25.6 million kwacha. What is the basis of that increment? You know. I'm asking you, what is the basis of that increment? What of programs the, or projects? No, no, show me the projects. The basis, uh, no, show me the projects. The basis of okay, that. Show me mm. the projects which are on the ground, which you are funding. It's not you the, don't throw money. Listen to me. It's yeah. wastage of resources. It's wastage of money. Mm. Okay? 
let me tell you if they understood what they are doing mm. they should have put that money under the equalization grant now the equalization grant mm. is such that <coughs> if Kab if Kabwe is growing faster, uh, faster than Kapirin Posh mm. are you with me yeah. sure. these are two districts two different districts right if Kabwe is growing faster than Kapirin Posh mm. Kapirimposhi is qualified for a grant in order for it to develop and catch up with Kabwe. Right. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. Now, the difference in public goods and services between Kabwe and Kapirimposhi mm. is what Kapirimposhi is qualified for. Right. And now it's, it's graduated into 25 lots, which 25 years. Uh, are you with me? Mm. So every year, Kapirimposhi will receive this grant mm. in order to develop infrastructure, mm. in order to catch up with Kabul. Right. So in 25 years' time, Kapirimposhi must look like Kabul. Uh, are we together? Yeah. Mm. That is how you use these resources, not throwing just the Are we supposed money. to do that? Who is supposed to uh, make up those plans? Is government and in that budget when you say government what do you mean exactly when you say government because even you and i we are we are governments you know we are, we are part of the government Look. and that uh, like for example if you belong you, you stay in munali okay the government I, I, now I, I, over ignorance. of Listen, bali is ignorance, saying ignorance. we are not going to be making decisions on behalf of the people of country constituents now but that hence is the running money away from will be taken to the council Listen. through decentralization and then the people make a decision on their own they will you, tell us what they want you, you guys you don't understand decentralization mm. what is uh, what is okay. it devolvement of power from the center yeah must be based on the law, not emotions. What you are doing is emotion. And you are going to create more confusion in those places. People are going to kill each other over that money. Because there are no projects. That money must go straight to intended projects. But you are throwing money there first. Listen to me. Then President the Suwale, you, you, you where, yourself, you did mention is, that uh, Zambia does not start and ends in Lusaka. That, those are your ways. I agree. All right? With you. And remember that even the leadership of this country does now, not only put, sit here in Lusaka. Put, even in all the in constituencies, place, place, we've got councils put in place, that are part and parcel yes. of managing, helping the government to succeed. We, we, so these are the people that are going to be helping the communities. Councils around the country are moribund. That's why you can... Members of parliaments? No, no. From Councillors 19, who listen, are part, me, and, uh, part and parcel of the council? Listen to me. Yeah. From the deceitful decentralization policy of Kenneth Kaunda, mm. okay, where you abolished mayorship um, mm. and introduced appointing governors from the center in 1980, mm. is what destroyed councils. Okay? Mm. And the final nail in the local government administration system mm. was put in place by the late Michael Sata in 1992, under Amendment Act Number 13 of 1992 to the Local Government Act, right. where, where innovation and creativity now was killed. Hmm. Okay? The Minister of Local Government now decides what happens in local authorities. Mind you, hmm. the relationship between central government and local government is based on variation of functions. One. Two. Is based on a conflict in their financials. Okay? Mm. And the financials are such that that conflict is such that when central government spends money, it induces inflation. When the same money is spent by the local government, it induces production. Okay? Mm. So when government is now sending money to to these areas, it will induce inflation. Right. Okay? Mm. Let us go to let's go back to the drawing board. Let us invoke established systems. Let mm. us 
invoke the relationship between central government and local government right. in, in our everyday programming. Hmm. And it's based on the law, not emotions. You don't send money just because you, 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 know, you send it to a constituency. Hmm. No programs there. All right. My director tells me we have to go, President Swale, but I'll ask you just two questions, then we, we close the program. Uh, my first question, uh, before that, I think before my first question, let me just uh, uh, bring out uh, something very important on our Facebook account. Uh, there's a, a very good question that is directed to you, and this is uh, Brian Chulu, who is asking that uh, where is your alternative budget, you know, to counter what has been presented by President Hakim Hichlema? That's the first question. I'm sure you can answer that one. And then uh, l l let me see. I'm trying to select those that are, mm -hmm. you know, sober in, mm -hmm. in language mm -hmm. uh, so that we don't uh, really provoke. I know you even controversial ones. Just yeah. put them there. Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, put them there. It's, it's my duty to, to censure certain messages. All right. So just respond to that one. Where is your, when are you try, likely to uh, produce your alternative budget to counter the UPNDs? You see, first and foremost, there is no budget to, to counter. Mm. Are, are you with me? Mm. There, is no, there is no budget to counter. How do I, how, how do I put it? Yeah. First and foremost, the minister has failed to demonstrate the resource base mm. on which he intends to grow the GDP. He has thrown figures around. The resource base is very, very clear. There are three components in a resource base. Export receipts. Right. Local expenditure in the economy. And projected investment for the year. So these three components, the minister has failed to, to clearly demonstrate hmm. the three components. So, how do you counter where there's no, there's no resource base hmm. to grow the GDP. What are you going to count? Where are you going to get the, the, the statistics? All right with me. The next question here, uh, President Swale, uh, is uh, from Walter Bundu, who is asking that, uh, so you mean that there is no need for a budget just because there are no projects in the, uh, these constituencies in Zambia? Let us first go and do the projects. What is it? That's why we, that constituents development fund. That's before, to be before producing the national budget? No. Listen, listen to me. Right. These are on running programs, government programs. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. Where government every day is looking at uplifting the lives of citizens. Hmm. Okay? For example, let me give you. Let, let us move away from all these yeah. uh, districts. You've got two minutes, so we have to go. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the chiefdom. Hmm. What is the role of, of a chief in the, you know, in the governance system of this country? Right. Are you telling me that at chiefdom level, for 57 years, you will have to live in the bush? <laughs> are with me? Yeah. How are we going to formalize that economy at village level? Those are the questions that we must begin to ask. Because Lusaka was a bush. Mm. Just like a, you know, a chief Munukwa's village mm. in eastern province in Chihangari. It was a bush. All right. Okay? But it's infrastructure. It is infrastructure that went into Lusaka. Right. And the banking sector the financial sector came to Lusaka mm. because <clears throat> there was something to ensure. The reason why the banks cannot go, the financial sector cannot go to Chief Munuka's area, there's nothing to ensure. There's nothing to bank. Right. There's no real estate development taking place other than such houses. Mm. 57 years down the line, why can't we uplift the village right. so that we begin to formalize the economy around the chief The other right. thing is that... <coughs> The last thing, okay? Yeah. The minister right. talked about... Actually, my director has given me more five minutes. Yeah. yeah. The minister of finance, mm. alluded in his budget speech presentation, alluded to water and sanitation. Yeah. But he is limited to boreholes. 
boreholes around the country. But when, in fact, water and sanitation is the, the key to industrialization, hmm. the entire Western industrialization, the Great Industrial Revolution, was driven by water and sanitation. This is an area, this is a sector which has capacity to consume the production of all other economic sectors. Mm. It will consume all mining production. It will consume all agricultural production. But you've spent 56 years crying that you want to diversify from mining to agriculture, yeah. from one subsector to the other. When the main sector, you you underplay it. Right. It will take all educational production. It will mm. take all construction infrastructure production. That's water and sanitation. That's the engine for industrialization. All right. Let, let's move on, President Swale. Now, uh, before I I, I, I I close the program, I want just to find out your opinion in terms of uh, how best can we protect these resources. Uh, we also have to bear in mind that uh, a national budget is just like, it's just a plan on paper, all right? Uh, anyway, besides that, uh, how can we protect these resources? We are coming from an era uh, where, or which was full of uh, corruption, you know, allegations. Uh, leaders were you know, being maligned to corruption issues. And we've got a new government here which has set a tone to fight corruption. Do you think the UPN administration is capable to protect these resources that have been announced to us, the people of Zambia? The first resource that you must protect yeah. is the population, the citizen. That is the first, first yeah. resource that you must protect. Okay? And of course, through the, 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 the monies that uh, people pay. Yeah. Because these are taxes. No, listen to me. Yeah. Then, out of the, you know, management of this resource, the human resource, is where you have you have the capacity, mm. okay, yeah. to manage the resources that you're talking about. Right. We must first invest in this population, mm. in the citizen. This, this citizen, you see, our biggest problem currently mm. is that the population, the citizen of Zambia, has no confidence about tomorrow. That's why you see this, uh, the stealing mm -hmm. of resources, yeah. the plunder of resources, okay? It's because they have no confidence about tomorrow. Mm. So whatever comes their way, they'll pick. Now let us begin to instill that sense of confidence about tomorrow. Right. You know, that the citizens are assured mm. that they will not go hungry. Right. That they will not have a job tomorrow. Mm. Are, are you with me? Yeah, sure. So, for us to do that, let us go back to the basics. Where did we go wrong? Mm. We cannot continue on the same path. Some of us are so passionate about mm. this country that we want things done the correct way. Mm. Repeated mistakes, repeated mistakes, yeah. expecting a different outcome, I've always said, right. is lunacy. Mm. And we cannot continue with the lunacy of the past 57 years. My last question, President Swale, is um, you are sitting here as a member of the European Alliance, correct? Yes, I know. <laughs> yes and no. Why yes and no? For the Before election, I, I proceed with my yeah. question, it may for be the, relevant. The, listen to me. Yeah. For the election to eject the identity thief Lungu, mm. yes, we worked together. Right. And that's why even the celebrating of uh, the ending of colonialism, I celebrated it. But right now, right now, mm. we have presented the budget. The honeymoon is over. 
It's time for hard work. It's time for hard work. You see, mm. we cannot be shedding, you know, chasing shadows. Let us face it. We have to criticize each other. Metal sharpens metal. Mm. If we all keep quiet, we're members of the alliance. Things will go wrong. We'll all be laughed at. You are smartly, you know, running out from my question. No, not running my out question from was very simple. Are you a member of the UPND alliance? And then you said associate. yes or no. Listen to me. You I'm justified your no, your, your no, I mean your yes, uh, because you wanted to work with the UPND for the sake of change, according we, to, um, we, we, if we, I can summarize what you just okay. said. Do you, do you now, know that are you a member of the UPND alliance? Let's listen, go to the yes. Yeah, listen to this. Let's go to the yes. There is full membership mm. and associate membership. All right. Would say so which one associate. qualifies you? We are associate members of the alliance. Thank you so much. And that now, I'll proceed with my question. Um, you've talked about, uh, or you are advocating for the need to go back to the basics if we want to sharpen this country, if we want to see a better Zambia, which will be promised. When you sit in that with your, your, your fellow associates, have you advised them, have you uh, uh, attempted to call Bali, for example, the person you worked with during the campaigns, that for us to do better, I think you have to follow these basics. Have you advised them? Listen to me, innocent. When you're campaigning, mm. you must have your goal. Yeah. Okay? Mm. What was our goal as New Labour Party mm. in the last election? Mm. Was to get rid of Lungu. Okay? Yeah. And the PF. Mm. We achieved that. Sure. And that's why we celebrated with our friends. Mm. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, to force your agenda onto your colleagues is another thing. Are you with me? Mm. So, we have to approach it from a point of metal sharpens metal. We have to criticize each other. We have to correct each other. We have to engage each other so that we have a better Zambia. It's as simple as that. Do you have an, op an opportunity right now to, to speak to Bali? Yes, sir. Do you speak to him? Well, I spoke to him on Sunday. Right. That was but before the budget. Yes, that's right. Did you advise him about uh, how no, you wanted how the budget we? to look We were like, celebrating. For example. Listen to me. No, last Sunday there was no celebration. We were celebrating. No, 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 independence. We were celebrating independence. Mm. The end of colonialism. Right. We, I celebrated him as the first president of the Republic of Zambia. Mm. And I still do. Okay? Mm. He's the first Zambian. He's the first Zambian. Mm. With umbilical cord buried in the soil of Zambia. Mm. In Bwengwa. That I still celebrate. I with me. Mm. But we must correct each other. When something is wrong, like the minister has presented this budget, mm. which is not responding to the population needs, to the citizen needs, we must be able to say, no, this is wrong. Did you call the minister or maybe even the president himself? Maybe Look, maybe from yesterday, listen, 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 today, listen, listen, listen to me. in the last 24 hours, have you attempted to call any of the leaders in government to advise? Because you are part of the alliance. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Yeah. And, and these are the mistakes that we always make in politics. Mm. Okay? Yeah. When you celebrate with your friends, it doesn't mean that they think of you in the same way. Yeah. Okay? And that's the reason why we, as political parties, we still retain our Those agenda. Those are closing remarks, so we have Listen, to go. Yeah. We have to re retain our agenda. What is our agenda? Mm. Our agenda, first and foremost, is that anyone who wants to work with us must agree that we reform the budget. In fact, even the AMF, 15 years ago, in 2006, at the hippie completion point, wrote a letter advising the Zambian government to reform the budget because we have enough resources. Mm. But we are going back to IMF $1.3 billion. Are with me? And we celebrate $1.3 billion. Are they going to give us the $1.3 billion to pay the teachers next year? Let us begin to engage each other so that we find middle ground. Okay? Mm. My being here, my criticizing my colleagues, doesn't mean that we become enemies. 
But first and foremost, we must be able to send a message that, that is wrong. Thank you so much, uh, President Swale. We have to go. Hope to engage uh, each other in